Hey there everyone, it's Haas here with another targeted weapon guide for Salmon Run, and this time it's the Hydra Splatling Stern, though what I'm going to talk about is honestly quite useful for all of the Splatlings to have better shifts with them. But since the Hydra Splatling is the slowest and generally the weapon I got a lot of feedback about being quite a struggle, we'll talk about this weapon specifically. The reason Splatlings are trouble for many from what I'm reading in the comments is their relatively slow speed and also the charge mechanic for firing that's especially dangerous when surrounded, which is understandable, it's pretty much the weakness and the special mechanic of Splatlings, not just in Salmon Run but also in PvP. I think there are generally two major mistakes that players do with Splatlings and I can only really help a lot with one of those. The first problem I think is positioning. Too many times players are in the wrong location at the wrong time and it becomes extremely hard to recover from that position if you're caught and as much as there are some good tips for it, it comes with general game experience and intuition that comes with time where it's good to stand or not. And expecting your teammates to help you is not going to help in most cases because everyone has their own issues and you don't know what your teammates are capable of. Obviously as a splatling you shouldn't go to the shore. It's very likely that there are other teammates who have better weapons for that to deal with short range threats, but your painting is also not fantastic for it, except if you're a mini splatling or maybe the bull point since the bull point splatling is versatile enough that in good hands you can risk a shore party. But of course for big shots you should absolutely always join since your massive DPS will annihilate those bosses that every other weapon struggles against, but overall what splatlings really excel at is controlling the area around the basket. Thanks to their exceptional range and burst damage, there really isn't anything you can deal with as long as you are in a good position, be it a tower on the Sokai station or the walls of Hydro Plant. And having just one teammate to secure the basket for the whole team is a huge relief for the whole team. So in general, I would try to adapt a more defensive playstyle first before trying to practice being aggressive. It will help a lot, trust me, and having a clean basket area also gives you more time to prepare for positioning, whatever wave is coming next. A final note for this part is that way too many players are ignoring lesser salmonids. Shoot them, especially Kohawks. You can't believe how much stress you're removing from other players by getting rid of the high health Kohawks from the stage. It's night and day difference if you only have to deal with chums as a weaker weapon. The second major issue and the one I can help a lot in this video though is overcharging or undercharging. What I see a lot is in panic situations or when a splatling is overrun, which is the worst situation to be in, players often start to charge completely uncontrollably and either try to charge for too long that is unnecessary and waste ink and time and damage and take too much damage themselves or get splatted or panic so much that they don't charge their weapons enough to deal damage and the results are pretty much the same. This is why my example in this video will be with the Hydra Splatling, since the Hydra is the easiest to make these mistakes with. To fix this part, the best training I would recommend is in the training lobby of Grisco. I'm sure most of you know this, but in case not, the target dummies in the lobby all represent certain Salmonids. You have the small balloons for small fried and chums, cohawks, and you even have boss balloons that you can see their stickers on to identify which one is which. For example, this balloon on the left grades is for the steelhead bomb that's also the exact height of a steelhead weak point that you can always check and practice against with your weapons to see if you can reach it or not. Either way, the training I'm proposing and guarantee you will help is simply getting the muscle memory and practicing the amount of charges required for each of these targets. This is huge for splatlings, simply trying out and practicing how much you exactly have to charge your Hydra splatling to splat salmonids, lesser salmonids especially, will help immensely during those tight panic situations when you either overcharge or undercharge to deal with them as fast as possible, or you have to move to a different positioning and you want to clear them as fast as you can. Knowing the exact amount you have to charge will not only save your life and ink, but also give you so much more time to move and position around. It also doesn't take that much time really, just spend a couple of minutes with every splatling before you start and carefully observe how much charge it uses to splat those balloons and that's pretty much it. Now to also talk a bit about the Hydra Splatling, it is the highest DPS weapon you can get in Salmon Run behind the best Grisco weapons. So much so that it obliterates anything you have time to shoot, including Kohozuna. So make sure to focus Chungus during those extra waves with it and you will melt its health. This extreme DPS also allows you to split certain targets differently compared to other weapons such as Maws or Flipper Floppers since your DPS is so high that you don't need a Splat Bomb against Maws. Though this one is very situational, but you can also absolutely destroy Flipper Floppers in the air armored without having to bother painting the circle under them first, which is really useful as a Splatling. The key to playing a Hydra Splatling is versatility in your gameplay. 
learn to use those partial charges, especially we trained for, to clear space around you, and then you can charge up to maximum and decimate anything that's remotely close to you, whether it's lesses or bosses. It's not so much about positioning even, than constantly cleaning the stage around you, if anything that moves, and you'll see huge improvements, and even with your low mobility, if you always secure the area around you, it's not a weakness anymore. But that is it for our quick weapon training for the day. Thank you for joining and I really hope this will help more freelancers as I know a lot struggle with slow weapons like splatlings and the Hydra splatling specifically. As always, if you have more feedback, let us know in the comments and make sure to like and subscribe to get more updates about the channel. Thank you for watching everyone and I'll see you the next time.